know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. It's so important that you fight whatever takes away your focus. Fight what fights your focus. Fight what fights your focus. I want to submit to you, you have not operated at your best as yet. We have not seen the best of you. Hmm? We have not seen the best of you. You have not produced your best product. You have not pitched your best pitch. You have not sold your best. You have not done your best. You have not presented your best. You have not been your best as yet. The best you can only come out by focus. By what? By what? By focus. So, if I was the enemy of your destiny, I would find something to take away your focus. Am I making sense? Whether it's a person, a thing, a habit, to take away your focus. Fight for your focus. Fight for your focus. Why? Because focus is the womb of accomplishment. So I cannot accomplish great things without focus. So I fight for my focus, then I achieve great things. Are you listening to me? To walk holy is to refocus. To refocus. When the message like this holiness message goes out, it makes you prioritize what matters and what doesn't matter. Sin makes you major on the minor. You start to prioritize unproductive things. It's one of the traps of sin. So you've got to be careful that you don't prioritize unproductive things or major on the minor. Amen. So what I'm saying here to you is so important because you are competing with Muslims. Now, Muslims are, are one of the most focused groups of people. Very, very focused. When they set their mind to do something, they see it through. When you are focused, you see things through. I was tempted to talk about diligence tonight and the Lord said, no, talk about holiness but from the perspective of focus. 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 You can be in the middle of an assignment. This one. Alright? And whatever your thing is, comes up. Your thing. Look at you, I say your thing. You know your thing. Right? That thing, right? We're not going to talk about your thing. But whatever it is, presents itself. Huh? And you ignore the deadline. You'd rather give an excuse for the deadline because you broke your focus and then start saying the deadline was not realistic. No, you just lost your focus. You had enough time to do it. You had enough resources to do it, but you chose to do your weakness. For some people, your weakness is just not being focused. And I see it a lot in church. You'd be amazed how many people daydream in church. A lot of daydreaming in church. A lot of it. And if you are going to achieve great things, you're going to have to learn how to focus. Teach yourself to focus. Teach yourself to start and finish something and not be distracted. And not be distracted. For example, God gave you an idea, but you never were focused enough to research on that idea and finish your research. And whenever now, maybe another message comes up after three months, you've, you've dropped that thing, you were same on your part as well. And then you just go home and say, hey, hush, hush, you're talking to me. <laughs> Am I talking to anybody? Yes. But you, you put that thing aside because you were not you're not focused. You're not focused. 
So when you're not focused, you don't complete assignments. You don't see things through. Nobody buys a half-baked cake. Nobody eats a meal that's not cooked properly to the end. I don't understand why people and all that underdone meat and all that, you know. Do your thing. <laughs> I want my meat well done. No blood. <laughs> the only blood I want to see is the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Can't do that. All right? So there's power in, complete, in, in, in completion. There's power in completing assignments. Complete your assignment. Complete your assignment. So don't allow any sin, habit, person, thing to take away your focus. And focus people will never fulfill their destiny. And sin is the number one reason for broken focus. So sometimes the devil introduces things in your life to break your focus. So be careful. It's not about whatever it is you are doing. It's about your destiny. Protect your destiny. Protect your destiny. And it might mean protect your focus. Protect your focus. Learn to ignore that phone. I promise you, Econet will not take away your line if you don't answer your phone. You can always call back. Are you here? Okay. Now. Holiness and destiny. You can't separate the two. You being a person who wants to do business, it means you have a very great destiny and you want, uh, in fact, within your destiny are the destinies of other people. Because if you have a business that employs 20 people and those people are going to work with you for the next 10 years, you can't tell me you can separate your destinies and theirs. Hmm? And you being the visionary, the enemy will attack, attack the visionary. He will attack the visionary. There are many people who are stranded today because their bosses couldn't keep themselves in check. And they shut down businesses for a habit. And we've got to discuss these things ahead of time because you, you see, you, if you're going to achieve great things, these kind of lessons now become imperative. You, 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 you can't uh, uh, do without these lessons. Because if you're going to be a boss, you're going to have a secretary. Now, if you turn into a secretary, <laughs> you've lost focus. You can't challenge her for deadlines. Ah, uh, come on, come on, boo. <laughs> Ah, come on, boo. Just, just, just bring yourself here. You're stressed. Let me help you to relax. I don't want to relax. I want my paperwork. So you can't challenge her to achieve those deadlines because you're compromised. Am I talking to anybody? All right. Now you're gonna have. You know, you, assuming you can't control yourself, you're gonna have a pool of. 25 women that you got access to. Fox in a hen house. Disaster. So God is saying, before I give you the money, let's get some control on you. You're going to travel the world. I'm talking about you. On business. Unaccompanied. No apostle watching you. In a hotel room, buy your nigga. So why are you laughing? <laughs> so you're gonna have to learn to make quality decisions beforehand. Beforehand, because with money comes freedom. And if you don't have control and your freedom, it's a recipe for disaster. Are you here? All right, so, so this is why it's so important that you just address these things. I like what Musa said. She says, you know, I don't push the things away and say they are for. I take them in. 
and say, this message is talking to me. Amen. Somebody say, it's talking to me. So even some of the most innocent looking people, you know, very holy looking people, are into deep pornography. And I'll never tell you, it be their little secret. You're there in church and say, hmm. That's why you date him. <laughs> now I, I figured it out. You're thinking of something you saw. I've caught you today. Ah, may Jesus clean your mind in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And I was talking to one of my sons and he says, you know what, I woke up depressed, you know, after Sunday. And he says, I couldn't pick up. Why? I said, it's because you are being forced to make quality decisions. Hello? Now, that depression is associated, it's like grief. Grief is associated with loss. I know you didn't report, but you felt depression, so. In fact, Sunday afternoon, when I go to California, I go, hey, because it you know you know you know why the message is so tough it's because these things have been in, ingrained in your system until they are now normal so now we are creating a new normal say a new normal called holiness now, now, holiness has great benefits. I mean, this message will evolve, I promise you. But when benefits say holiness, it will get nicer as we... But for now, I use this issue to She don't for kweshala, kweshala, kweshala. One thing that will help you to walk holy is to have friends that love holiness. Those are very few. That might mean you have to change all your friends. But you know what the Lord said? He said to me, Matthew 5 verse 6, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. You have to thirst for it. You have to want it. In this series, you have to get to a place where you stop resisting it. I mean, this morning I was shocked with the numbers in morning prayer. Oh. Number one, on a Tuesday, Number two, we're talking about holiness. And people turned up in round numbers. I was surprised. And the Lord said to me, the message is sinking. Yeah. It's sinking. People are making quality, quality decisions. If Jesus came back today, you would start recruiting at KPM. Yeah. Yes. You, right now, you are still holy. Very holy. Because I mean, there are some people who are surprised you have not found them. Two days, <laughs> No, they'll be surprised. I said they'll be surprised because you have made a quality decision. This is not just sexual partners, it could be drinking buddies as well. Hallelujah. So, so I, anyway, I go back to that son of mine I was talking about. And I say to him, you see, don't be depressed. What you need now is to ask the Holy Spirit to help you with this work. You can't be holy without the Holy Spirit. You can't be holy without what? The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will not help you if you don't ask him to help you. If you are in sin, he will assume you like it. He just leave you like that. Just leave you. I should like it on us. And I think now you're at a place where you where you now can no longer enjoy it, even if you're enjoying it before. After this sermon, you can't enjoy it anymore because you know every time you are doing it, it's costing you something. It's costing you. It's costing you. It's costing you. Sin is so expensive. And yet immediately I don't see the cost. Imagine if Adam and Eve they could see ahead of time, they wouldn't partake of that fruit. They wouldn't part it, that fruit cost them glory. It cost them presence of God. It cost them productivity. They now had to suffer to get everything. I don't believe you should work hard for everything. 
No, it means there's no God dimension there. Are you understanding? So as much as I am an advocate for hard work, I'm also an advocate for divine favor. Holiness ushers in the favor of God. And you need that favor of God. So if not for any other reason, be holy because you need God's favor. Praise the name of the Lord. Say with me from now, going forward, my position shall be I love holiness. I will pursue it with intentionality. I love holiness because I love to please God. I realize there are things God will do for me when I get holy, when I walk holy. One of the major reasons why I should walk holy is because holiness equals answered prayers. Holiness equals divine attention. Holiness equals God backing. Holiness equals favor. Does that make sense? And in business, you need favor. Why? There are so many people who are competing with you. So many people who are competing with you. And when you have God's favor, it doesn't matter who's competing with you. It doesn't matter who's competing with you. Are you here, church? I mean, I was so excited today. My business partner came to me. He says, hey, I had a meeting today and I had a surprise from God. He says, hey, holiness, please. I said, praise God. He says, I got a phone call from some people. I was talking to them years ago and I went and talked for years. They called me and said, right, we need you to do this job for us. 1.5 million. No tender, no quotation, no, no. <laughs> Now, is that not better than Kuchimilika <laughs> Kwezo Kwezo Market? Without holiness, you Chimilik. Yes, Auno Maya Maya. One point. I can't wait for that money. Hey, if anyone wants this car, I don't want it anymore. I want to change it. <laughs> I want, I, it's frustrating me. Moses, this car is frustrating me. It's, I've had it for too long. Ha, 2016. Ha, yeah, that is a... So, I will need to offload. Offload. <laughs> no, I had a contractor at my house today. Eh? You know what he was doing? He was putting up new carpets for the coming fleet. Kolama ze kalama haya. Even if you get angry, I mean, it will not change. It. If you're getting angry, you holiness. <laughs> Don't be jealous. <laughs> With me, you will see it coming to pass. In Rokupatu, my morning, morning signs. I'm just preparing you so that you don't have heart attack. Kola mazata mahaya. Yeah, I mean, I had to prepare you, you know, with that Rolls Royce. I, I had to seriously prepare the church. I, I, <laughs> I mean, I changed. <laughs> if you talk to me nicely, I'll send you pictures. <laughs> ah, Bono, I'll send you the pictures, eh? Uh, that car is born again. <laughs> that car is born again. I'm sure in heaven they'll find that car. Marjorie, remind me, I'll send you, I'll send, I'll, 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 I'll send you the pictures. But God said to me, until you are holy, you can't enter there. So, by lack of holiness, what level are you costing yourself? Because, I mean, the Lord spoke strong. And holiness equals stagnation. I mean, God doesn't mind. You can be asking, I don't know why. I don't know why my things like this. I, I can't understand. Hey, I don't even. <laughs> God is like, Negro, please. And I love what Grace said. You, you can't lie to yourself. I mean, you just know. Introspection. You just know. Up, 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 up. Up, up. Up, 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 up. It's a quality decision. Backed up with the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? To help you going forward. 
But before going forward now, you need to ask the fire of God to burn that thing away. Because you see, iniquity is mysterious. The Bible talks about the mystery of iniquity. It's in your Bible. That shows you there's a spiritual dimension to the sin. I mean, we dealt with that this morning in morning prayer. There is a spiritual dimension to the sin. So you need to find and fight the spiritual root to the sin. It could be historic. It could be that there are some people in your family who were sold out to these things. The sex. Anointed to have sex. And it's in the bloodline. It's true. There are people who have those man number 11, I just tell me my private parts. It's very true. Now, imagine now you come out of that lineage and you don't address that issue spiritually. It must be addressed. Am I talking to somebody? Say it must be addressed. Talk to me. Say it must be addressed. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree the spiritual root behind my problem must be addressed in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I need you to help me to address the spiritual root behind my problem. Hallelujah. If you struggle with drinking, check your forefathers. Check your forefathers. It's just now you, you are doing it on the hunter's level. You don't know Chikokiana. You don't understand Chikokiana. <laughs> seven days. <laughs> I was told once about the way they brew seven days. I was shocked. I was shocked. As they throw anything and everything in there, including cats, <laughs> cats, boots, <laughs> batteries, they just throw anything and everything there. I was, I was surprised. But when I heard the results, I understood. Drunk for seven days. Even glue cannot compete with that one. <laughs> So it, it came from the forefathers. Are you understanding me? You've got to fight it. If you check in the Bible, the two things that fight destiny the most are sex and alcohol. Those two. Those two. See, those are not the only sins. I didn't leave anything out on Sunday. Every stone was untended. And if I send you those messages on WhatsApp, please don't ignore them. Watch them. Watch them. Because God wants to show you something. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to get to a place where you love righteousness. I want us to go through a few scriptures that will help us and show us the benefits of walking in holiness. Psalm 45. It says in verse number 4. And in your majesty, write prosperously. How many want to write prosperously? Now then it gives us the reason why you write prosperously. Because of truth. Hmm? Because of what? So truth will make me right prosperously. I will have a prosperous journey on the earth because of, say I will walk in truth. Talk to me, say I will walk in truth. I have made a decision to walk in truth. Even if others are not walking in truth, I shall walk in truth. Whenever I fall, I will repent quickly and ask God to help me out of that situation with the intention of not repeating the same mistake. Hallelujah. Alright. Say I walk in truth. Alright. It says because of truth, humility and holiness. Truth, humility and holiness. Some Bible say righteousness. So because of walking in righteousness, I will walk in truth. I will walk in prosperity. I will ride prosperously. Why? Because of truth. Because of truth. I mean, you can't run away from that scripture. He gives us the reason why things are working because of... Now, the Lord said to me this evening while people were giving their testimonies and stuff like that, He said to me, every promise in my word is subject to holiness. He said, every scripture you want fulfilled is a condition of holiness. Look at the promises behind prayer. He says, call on me and I'll answer. You've been calling, He's not been answering. Hmm? Give and it shall be given unto you. You've been giving, it has not been given unto you. Why? It's all dependent on holiness. 
Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will come down and heal the land. So God says, I will only come and answer the prayer if you walk in holiness. If you walk in holiness. Hello? And also our offerings are more effective when they are offerings given in righteousness. We discover this in Malachi chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5. Isn't it? So when I offer the offering, I must offer it in righteousness. So now all of a sudden, before you present your envelope, you have got to be repenting. That's why it's important to have that envelope at home, isn't it? So that now, by the time you present it in church, you are presenting it from a platform of holiness. What I'm sharing with you here, we will get many results in our lives. I'm telling you, we will get many more results. Before you bring that sacrifice on the altar, make sure you have confessed your sins. Make sure you are right with God and then you offer it in righteousness. Offer it in what? That means that before I pray, I must repent. Otherwise, God is not attending that prayer meeting. Hmm? I don't believe anyone here likes to waste their time. No. You want things that make sense. So it's important if I'm, I'm going to give to God, if I'm going to give my tithe, if I'm going to give my offering, I must repent before I do it so it's effective. It's important before I pray, before I, I get into the presence of God, I must wash myself. I must cleanse myself. Am I right? You don't go before a dignitary without bathing. How can we go before God without taking a, a bath, a spiritual bath? We've got to wash ourselves. We've got to cleanse ourselves. We've got to be presentable before the Lord our God. Hallelujah. You will ride prosperously because of truth. I'm talking to you. You, you, you will ride prosperously because of truth. You will ride prosperously because of righteousness. Because you have made this decision to walk holy, may you experience results in the name of Jesus. And every devil that resists your decision to walk in holiness, they have got to leave you alone in the name of Jesus. By the apostolic grace upon my life, I decree over your life. Every power of the devil that sponsors your unholiness, may that power lose you and let you go in the name of Jesus. The power that causes you to sin against your will, that power has got to leave you and let you go in the name of Jesus. I said that power must leave you in the name of Jesus. The power behind your sin has got to break. Yes. Hallelujah. So when you're struggling with something, go before God and say, God, as part of my deliverance, I want deliverance from sexual sin. It has power over me and I don't want it to have power over me. I don't want to destroy my testimony. Hallelujah. So Lord, destroy the power behind the sin. Lord, destroy the power behind the sin. Hallelujah. Everyone gets angry, but yes, you know, every day you are angry about something. You know that there must be a spirit sponsoring that thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody's got a temper, but you, you've got a short temper. In fact, you've got no temper to the extent that you're just, you're just an angry person walking. Anger is what made Moses not to get into the promised land. I used to be an angry man walking. I mean, everything, I just used to be angry. I never used to give my, 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 my wife latitude to make any mistakes. You're not allowed to make mistakes around me. And God said to me, this is not sustainable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when God speaks to you, it's very strong. <laughs> this is not sustainable. Hallelujah. You've got to learn to give people grace. This is one reason why a lot of people are angry. Learn to give people grace. The Bible says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Amen. So you've got to ask God to help you with that anger. That anger is rooted deep inside. So you, you've got to ask God to uproot it. Say, Lord, uproot that root of anger. That's on the inside of me. Amen. For me, I've never understood, you know, I've never been drunk before. So, you know, I've never understood how someone can drink a whole crate. That whole thing, I don't know. I, does that really happen? By yourself. Hi. If you just drink two Fantas or two Finwa. So how does it work? This one I need someone to explain to me. <laughs> how does it work? That you can just drink and drink and drink and drink. Where will it be going? 
You know my answer to that? It's a spirit that will be drinking it. Mm. Okay, now you're a Christian, eh? Go and try and drink. I'll give you permission. <laughs> you can't drink that way anymore because the spirit has... Somebody say the spirit behind it. So now more of your prayers must attack sin than pursue money. More of your prayers must do what? They must attack sin and attack your weaknesses as opposed to soliciting money from God. Every time you pray, you are sending a message to heaven. You are telling God, it's more important for me to be right with you than for you to bless me. Because when I'm right with you, you will bless me anyway. I will still get the things that I want from God. Hallelujah. Where do we find that in the scriptures? 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Eye has not seen or ear heard, neither the end of the hearts of men. The things that God has, what? Prepared for them that love him. Proof of love is holiness. Proof I love God is holiness. I walk away from certain things because I love God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of the Lord. Then he says in the same scripture, we're still in Psalm 45. He says in verse 6, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. (laughs) We want the scepter, but we don't want the righteousness. It can't work. The scepter is a scepter of what? Of righteousness. Even anointing oil works if you are walking right. Hey. Because anointing oil works. <laughs> Your whole house. No time. <laughs> and yet the devil still walks in there. Whew. Why? No righteousness. You are thinking about good time. Good time at zero. My window is shut up. But yet, spirit husband is still coming. He's still. I shut up. Go go there. Zero go to traffic. What gives him power to access your life is lack of holiness. Thank you, Lord. I'll say that. Unholiness gives the devil power over your life. And we find this in the scripture we read today, 1 Chronicles 21. Remember, David was given three options after he sinned by God. And one of the options was three months, the enemy will be winning against your life. So when I sin, the enemy starts to win. So you can't destroy the power of witchcraft when you're not walking holy. The Bible says a curse without cause. Proverbs 26 verse 2 part B shall not stick. A curse without cause shall not stick. So if I am in sin, I'm giving the curse a reason to stick. You know what many witches do? They provoke you. Do what you They know that. What he's trying to do is to find Sinjokita say, Cheku Batirira, so they can gain access. Are you listening to me? Whatever the devil is using to gain access into your life, may God show you that thing and that thing be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I decree no more satanic access into your life in the name of Jesus. I say no more satanic access in your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I want you to have that scepter of righteousness. The scepter of the kingdom. The scepter will be used to open doors. When I say scepter, see like the rod of Moses. Isn't it? Moses used that rod, scepter in court, to open and part the Red Sea. Are you listening to me? And that scepter only works in righteousness. Praise the name of the Lord. May your scepter of righteousness be established in the name of Jesus. I said, may your scepter of righteousness be established in the name of Jesus. Whatever you decree in the realm of the spirit, I decree from today going forward, because of your decision of holiness, those doors must open as you speak in the name of Jesus. What you decree must be established in the name of Jesus. Because you have made up your mind not to be a liar, I decree, as you make declarations in the realm of the spirit, may the realm of the spirit take your word seriously in the name of Jesus. May you be a serious Christian with a powerful testimony in the name of Jesus. May people around you 
testify of your goodness in the name of Jesus. May they testify of your holiness and refusing to compromise in the name of Jesus. May you be empowered by holiness in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at verse 7. He says, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. You love what? Righteousness and hate. You have to hate it. You have to hate sin. The Bible says he who loves sin is an enemy of God. You can't afford to be an enemy of God. Can you afford to be an enemy of God? No, you can't afford. So, in other words, I must love what God loves. I must hate what God hates. What does God love? Holiness. What do I love? Holiness. You are still stuttering. You must love what God loves. What does God love from this scripture? What does God love? What do I love? So, if you love what God loves, you will experience what God has in store for you. Simple. Because how can two walk together except they agree? God says, I, I love holiness. You, you say, I hate holiness. It's a punishment. Holiness is not a punishment. It's a walk that we've decided to take with God. Prerequisite for our walk with God is holiness. Not drunken Christian. No. Holiness. Holy Christian. Say, I'm a holy Christian. I'm a child of God. I'll behave like a child of God. I will speak like a child of God. I will walk like a child of God. Yes, I've made mistakes. But from now going forward, I've made up my mind to walk right before God. Even if I fall, I will rise quickly. I will rise quickly. I will repent. I will move forward with the intention of not making the same mistakes again. Amen. 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 Praise God. Somebody said to me, but man of God, David, he kept sinning and sinning and sinning. I said, okay. That's fine. I'll give you that. But look at this. How long was David's life? David's life was about 75 years old. This, what did he say? Four score or something. David limited his life, by the way. Yes, he limited his life because he said, you know, he basically accepted that he can die before 80. And that's when he died. Yeah, you must learn to speak long life. That's another sermon. You must decide that you are not dying before 100, 101, 105. Hallelujah. Yeah, so you must make up your mind. Anyway, David, for argument's sake, he lived for 75 years. Right? And in 75 years, how many stories of sin do we have about David in the Bible? Probably, let's say at most five. This is Huh? Okay. How many do you have? <laughs> you want to say, I'm like David. I'm like, uh, you're not like David. <laughs> you liar, you. <laughs> no, I, I'm not. Can I tell you the David? They're not more than five. You today alone. At least today, just because of our, because you're still thinking about Sunday message, maybe you're all two. <laughs> David in 75 years. Maybe five. I am Pamand the Z. Bathsheba, the counting of the people. What's that boy they killed? Uriah. I think Bathsheba Maganaka in. A woman worthy to make you kill the husband. Hey, I think he was a serious woman. Hey, I don't know whether she's in heaven or hell, but I want to see that Bathsheba. <laughs> and the thing I discovered from scripture about Bathsheba is Bathsheba, I guess. That's even where she got her name, Bathsheba. <laughs> David saw her bathing on the top of the roof. Bathsheba, I guess. David said, you, you are too bad. I'll kill husband for you. <laughs> okay, that's the guy. Three. And depends on You see? I, I, do you get my point? You get my point? So from today, don't abuse David. <laughs> don't abuse David. And to prove.
prove that he was a man after God's own heart, go and read Psalm 51. David never justified. He just said, He's not in the scripture. The is not in the scriptures. He's not in the scriptures. And yet every day you use it. But he's not in the scriptures. So David was a man after God's own heart. And the Lord said to me, despite his weaknesses, he kept wanting to find the heart of God. Lord, I'm sorry. You, you've never said that. So let's practice. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I have sinned. I have greatly sinned against you. Forgive me for every sin that I've committed. Give me power over every sin. The sin that so easily besets me. Give me power over that sin in the name of Jesus. I don't want sin to have dominion over me from today. I want to love righteousness and hate wickedness. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Look at this. He says in Psalm 45, verse 7, I did, you love righteousness and hate weakness. Therefore, consequences of holiness, God, your God, has anointed you. Hmm? Has anointed who? Me. With what? With the oil. So in other words, even if I anoint you, <laughs> if you are not walking in holiness, it's just oil on your head. You just walked out of church with a shiny head. <laughs> that all is just equivalent to Nivea. <laughs> or Vaseline. Blue seal or red seal, whichever one. You might as well just have come from your house. The man of God, can you please just Zorami Mafuta. That's all you've done. Anointing oil without holiness is Vaseline. Yeah, I'm teaching you scriptures, church. Look, look, I didn't make these things up. He says, therefore, after you love righteousness and hate weakness, therefore, your God has anointed you. This is what he didn't say. He didn't say the man of God has anointed you. I can anoint you because I like you. But if you are doing nonsense, God has not anointed you. It's a waste of time. I mean, think about the number of anointing services we've had. How many are there? There are too many. So it means they were not working because there was no holiness. So for anointing to be activated, there has to be what? Holiness. He says, therefore your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. So, holy people are more anointed. Holy people are more anointed. Holy people are more anointed. And it is the anointing that breaks yokes. It is the anointing that opens doors. It is the anointing that brings customers. You need the anointing. You can't live an anointingless life because of unholiness. So, every time you walk in unholiness, you are de-anointing yourself. You are de-anointing yourself. All the anointing you've gathered over years, you fall. You have to start gathering it again. Because if holiness anoints, and holiness de-anoints, just by simple reasoning. Look at this, verse 8. All your garments are scented with myrrh and alloy and cassia. These are special spices. In other words, there's a divine smell upon you. It is a smell of favor. Are you listening to me? So when I'm holy, my garments smell of a scent of favor. Everywhere you go from this night, because of that decision, ah, you will smell a smell of favor in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Then it says, verse number 11, so, so, meaning consequences of holiness, and it is, so the king will greatly desire your beauty. The king will greatly desire your beauty. Are you seeing that? Why? Because of holiness. When you are holy, you are more desirable. Hey, may you be more desirable to the kings on the marketplace. Decision makers on the marketplace, they will desire for your contract. They will desire for your proposal. They will desire for your skills. 
Listen to what he's saying. He's saying you can be beautiful but not be desired. You see, this scripture is not questioning your beauty. This scripture is not questioning your ability. It's not questioning your proposal. It's not questioning how good you are. It's not questioning that. But what he's saying is that holiness now is what makes your beauty, which is there, desired. So it can be there and not be desired. Are you getting what I'm saying here? So you must be, you must be beautiful but holy. So the king will greatly desire your beauty. Are you understanding? Look at verse 12. And the daughter of Tyra will come with a gift. Because of holiness. Will come with a what? With a gift. In other words, you will now start to receive things you are not supposed to receive. Things you didn't work for. Things you didn't qualify for. You don't have to toil anymore. Are you getting it? Why? Because of holiness, you will receive gifts. May you receive gifts because of holiness. May God send you gifts because of holiness. Just to put a seal of favor on you, may God send people to send you gifts in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Then it says, the rich among the people will seek your favor. The rich among the people. Not people seeking to borrow from you. The rich among the people will seek your favor. They will be saying, please, please, please do us a favor. Please, the rich among you. This is serious. The rich among you will seek for your favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May you be found dining in palaces. Because the rich from among you will seek your favor in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 112. All these scriptures I'm reading, they're prophetic. And they must come to pass in your life. Holiness will make the Bible come alive in your life. Holiness affects the next generation. Even when Solomon messed up, God said, Solomon, if it was not for David, I would have finished you. He was rescued by the holiness of his father. David was holy because he repented. Did you get that? David was what? Holy because he Remember the song that uh, 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 Donnie McClellan sang? He said, a righteous man falls how many times? Seven times, but he does what? He gets back up again. What makes him righteous is he gets back up again. May you get back up again. I said, may you get back up again. From wherever you fell, may you get back up again. From every mistake you made, may you get back up again. I said, may you get back up again. I speak that over your life. You will get back up again. Things you used to do, you won't do anymore. Places you used to go, you won't go anymore. Because you have made up your mind to walk in righteousness in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. How many want to positively affect the, the next generation? Okay, so you want to live an inheritance uh, for your children's children. I mean, that scripture says it. It says a good man. <laughs> a good man, that's what? <laughs> lives an inheritance for his children's children. So a bad man leaves nothing for his children because of the things he's doing. I mean, it's, it's just becoming so clear. I mean, without holiness and righteousness, the scriptures, we are reading them, they will not be fulfilled. Are you a good man? Are you a good woman? You know yourself. If you are not good, you better start being good. Why? You need to live an inheritance for what? Your children's children. So all this poverty in Africa is because of wickedness. A lot of wickedness. Witchcraft. The capital city of witchcraft is Africa. Capital continent in Africa is Africa. Africa is the world leader in witchcraft. Africa is the world leader in jealousy. Mm -hmm. Jealousy is the highest grade before witchcraft. Yeah, postgrad, yeah, just undergrad, undergrad, yeah. <laughs> They're about to issue you with the graduation for witchcraft. Jealousy. I mean, you, you see someone's shoe, you get frustrated. <laughs> You'll soon be a witch. Don't be jealous. These hidden sins are not jealousy and what, what, what. These ones, those are the ones in church now. 
the things people say in their mind. Hmm. I mean, you're just preaching. You say, Nela, Nela, Nela. Is it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That oil is on the nail. Am I talking to somebody here? Those are the things you must check in your mind. You know, can I ask, can I, in fact, I want you to write this. I want you to write this down. Why am I like this? <laughs> that is a powerful question. Why am I like this? <laughs> ask us, that is a powerful question. Statement of the day. Why am I like this? Just like on Sunday. Who said you? <laughs> I said, who said you? <laughs> ah, baby, what are you saying? That is so. What you are like? You have Rose Lucifer. Who signed the letter of your engagement? Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Who delights, but delight up, who delights greatly in his commandments. You've got to delight in it. And then my Bible says, Hallelujah. My Bible is powerful. <laughs> it says, Hallelujah. Ah, Marshall, you, you come see the thing I'm making. Come and see. Yeah. see. You see? You see? Oh, then. Hallelujah. You see? Greatly command lives in the delights in the commandments. Hallelujah. Verse 2. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. In other words, holiness breaks barrenness. You see, when you talk of barrenness, people think of no children, no children. No. No. You can be barren in business. You can be financially barren. You can have success barrenness. Merit or barrenness. You are married, but that marriage is empty. It's called merit or barrenness. You look at the person and you say, why, why me? <laughs> say, God, what did I do? You look at the person and say, God, forgive me <laughs> for my sins. <laughs> if, this, if this marriage is punishment, Lord, it, it's too dear for me. You can have a marriage and just it's just called a living arrangement to save rent. Hey, ah, painful. Please don't marry in the flesh. Don't marry in the flesh. Don't marry because of feeling. No, can in the feeling Don't marry because of age. Wakura. No, no. Don't marry for looks. Marry for purpose. There might be somebody not as good looking, but purpose. Mm, 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 mm. There are some beautiful women that the, the man leaves the, wife, the woman. And people say, how can he leave such a woman? They don't know the woman. I'm speaking the truth. Hmm. <laughs> People just look at that color. The man is saying, hey, why don't you take it? <laughs> you know something you don't know. He's saying there's something beyond color. Hallelujah. So if you marry for color, you'll be in trouble. Marry for purpose. Marry because you are moving in the same direction. People can tell you some stories. The best people to counsel single people who are not married are people with marital problems. <laughs> I think that arrangement, I must, I must make that arrangement. I must say, you, come and <laughs> this one wants to marry somebody who's a drunkard. I was at Nana, Garaf. You won't change that boy. Hallelujah. So, so when we talk of barrenness, people just think of no children, but you can be barren in a lot of areas. That's my point. All right. So verse two, his descendants shall be what? Mighty on the earth. Then listen to this. The generation 
of the upright will be blessed. Of the what? Of the what? Not of the crooked. The generation of the upright. What will happen to them? They shall be blessed. Jacob went for years without the blessing. Until finally he came to himself. He said, God, I will not let you go until you bless me. Do you know why? He had seen what the blessing did to Isaac. He saw what the blessing did to Abraham. Are you seeing it? He says, I've been traveling without this blessing. Because of crookedness, I have not had the blessing operate. Listen to this. The blessing will always be more powerful than crookedness. The blessing. And the blessing is activated by holiness. So holiness is You know, I'm going to play in the numbers. So, he says the generation of the upright will be what? Will be blessed. Now, look at the result of the blessing. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Ha, this looks like my house. I mean, I've just thought of my house. <laughs> Wealth and riches, US dollar, pound sterling, shall be in the house. Hallelujah. Don't be jealous. You must say that's also my portion. Praise the name of the Lord. Wealth and riches shall be in whose house? Why, why should it be, shall it be in your house? Because you're a Christian? Because you go to, to church? Because you come to morning prayer? And the wealth and riches shall be in the house of the one who wakes up in midnight prayer? No. Wealth and riches shall be in the house of who? The upright. The upright. The upright. So, walking upright attracts wealth. Crookedness repels wealth or attracts poverty. Take your choice. Praise the name of the Lord. May you be upright. I said, may you be upright. May you do things that are upright. Anything that grieves God, may you stop doing that today in the name of Jesus. Whatever God, whatever pushes God away from you, may you push it away from your life in the name of Jesus. I said, whoever pushes God away from you, may you push that person away from your life in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And the wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. So in other words, it's not temporary holiness. Just to try it out, you know, I'll just, no, 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 no. <laughs> it must endure forever. A permanent decision to be holy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the, unto the upright, there arise light in the darkness. You see that? So even if the enemy is doing the works of darkness against you, because you are walking in righteousness, God will send light and say, look at this. Look at this. In other words, God will not allow for there to be any surprises in your life. Why? Because you are walking in righteousness, the light of God will shine upon your life. I see that light shining from this month of April going forward in the name of Jesus. I said, I see that light shining upon your house in the name of Jesus. Every work of darkness being worked against you by the enemy will be exposed in the name of Jesus. May God will expose every power of darkness against your life in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Darkness has got no answer to light. And light only comes via holiness. The Bible says, walk in the light. Walk in the light. I don't believe in being afraid of police. I don't believe in that. You know, No, that's not business. That's, that's being crooked. Do business in a way that you sleep at night. When your phone rings, you pick it. Hello? Yes, can I help you? You just say, We better have a one of church. I mean, now your children are tired of answering your phone. <laughs> Hello? How's the data and people? <laughs> now you said, children can't help me. I'll do it myself. Hello? <laughs> Chupara residents can help you? My dad is in any younger. <laughs> you have now mastered the voice. A whole man has mastered a baby girl voice. Look at this. <laughs> ah, 
And I believe in Jesus Christ. You owe, you owe people. You owe more than the reserve bank. Hey! <laughs> hey, then you know you owe. Ha! <sighs> hey! Now when you answer your phone, you go. You, you've mastered it. You can't need to go to Kazashian. You don't know what it is. subscriber you have dialed <laughs> is not reachable. I said <laughs> the mobile <laughs> the mobile subscriber you have dialed is not reachable. Oh <laughs> Please try later. Meanwhile, for you, three seconds, four seconds. I am proof the blood of Jesus is very powerful. Me, I'm proof of redemption. <sighs> hey, March, I was so bad. That is next level. That is next level. Yeah. Did you not comment? Plus, I told you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't agree. <laughs> okay, you're finished. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> I, I, it was bad. It was bad. I just had to surrender to the blood of Jesus. Because me without the blood. That's why I tell you, don't go and search in my past. Please, don't. <laughs> Just save yourself a lot of time. <laughs> Hear from me. I am proof the blood of Jesus. Raw paradise. Me, I don't pretend. Like other pastors who call us, they ah, you know, God is a good God. <laughs> me, I was dangerous as a razor. <laughs> but now, oh, double one, you have only slept with four people. <laughs> Others, Holy Ghost, burn the files, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Burn file and evidence, Holy Ghost. Otherwise, I'll not be allowed to hold this microphone. <laughs> when I got the microphone, the devil was shocked. He said, Ah, this one. <laughs> now, I'm just making it light because you must understand there's nothing so bad the blood of Jesus cannot wash it. That's what I'm telling you. So don't condemn yourself. Ah, you, you're an amateur. You have not sinned. <laughs> you don't know sin. Me, I was iniquity. Iniquity itself. The iniquity on America, baby. That was me. <laughs> so I know how to get out of these things. And I prefer a teacher who's been there, done that, got the t-shirt, got the degree. Than, uh, than uh, someone who never sinned. Uh, uh, you, you was just born perfect and then he just says, you know... Sin is a choice. I'm not that there's a choice. There are only ten thousand people that say. Am I talking to somebody here? Ah, somebody say I can get out of this thing. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And many pastors will not tell you this because they want to appear perfect. Yes. Hallelujah. Me, me, I was not perfect. No, far from it. But I thank God. It took a quality, quality, quality decision. Hallelujah. Yes, as, as a human being, you will fall here and there. But 
but you need to just get back up on the horse very quickly and say, Jesus, I'm sorry, forgive me. Strengthen me. I don't want this thing anymore. And the power behind conquering sin, Mahachi, watch this, is because you don't want it anymore. If you still want it, you can't get out of it. Hallelujah. You've got to get to a place where you are tired of yourself. Get tired of yourself and say, this thing, I don't want it anymore. Hallelujah. I mean, you wake up in that bed, in the wrong bed, and you say, what am I doing here? Yeah, I'm talking to adults here. You know what I'm talking about. So you've got to realize how much is costing you and just make up your mind and say, this thing is not worth it. Hallelujah. Well, I taught this subject long back. And somebody who used to come to the church said, said, man of God, you've reminded me, uh, you know, I was now born again and I was seeking the Lord and I went out of town. He went to, to Lesotho, I think it was, to close a deal. And you know how some deals you can say, all right, we've agreed in principle. And it, right, you shake on the deal and then we'll sign up on Monday. This was a Friday. He says, we'll sign up on Monday. So he, because he was so excited, he decided to celebrate over the weekend. <laughs> so over the weekend, he was drinking, he was womanizing, all sorts of things. Come Monday, the people changed their minds. How much was the deal? 250,000 US dollars. He says, what you're saying is so true. I lost a quarter of a million just by drinking. So it's just that, you know, sometimes we don't see the things we miss out on. So we don't see how much we've cost ourselves. But this teaching must tell you, if I want wealth and riches in my house, I just need to make a quality decision. And some of the decisions are painful decisions. And to see them through, you require the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you go back. It's easy to go back. It's easy to backslide. I'm telling you. I mean, if just if I just close the service now, 30 minutes from now, you could have backslided. You, you could seriously backslide. But if you make up your mind, this thing, I don't want it anymore. Then you begin to put security systems around your holiness. Are you listening to me? Put checking systems. Part of checking systems is you have... A relationship with the man of God where you can phone him and say, man of God, I'm being honest. You phone, you phone my and say, hey, my phone is, I'm not out on. Please stand with me. That says you don't want it. That says you don't want it. Somebody say, I don't want this anymore. I want to experience God's best. If your issue is anger, you phone and you say, hey, I want to kill someone here. Please help me. Because you know what? Anger is a down payment for murder. If you don't manage anger, you'll kill someone. All those people were in prison because of murder. It started by anger. You can't murder someone smiling. <laughs> you have to get angry first. Are you listening to me? Anger is very, very dangerous. Listen to that boy, what's his name? Lamech, who came from the lineage of Moses. The lineage of Anazan, of Cain. Yeah. And I have wounded a man. I have killed a man. He was saying it very proud. So you need to check your background. Check the weaknesses in your background. Fight them. Please go through Psalm 51. All of it. Very powerful. Go through it. And pray it through. That's your midnight prayer. And ask God to create a clean heart within you. To renew a right spirit in you. Hallelujah. May you have the right spirit. In the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Alright. So, so the wealth that God wants for you. Comes on the wings of righteousness. So walk in righteousness. Job chapter 1. I know you have been helped. Someone is saying that it's that devil who doesn't want me to keep repeating this message. Guess what I'm preaching on Sunday? <laughs> There's no price for guessing. <laughs> Holiness. Yes, you will bath to come and hear about taking a spiritual bath. Holiness. Hallelujah. Job 1 verse 1. There was a man. 
in the land of Harare, whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. What a scripture. What a CV. What a CV. Hey, me, I wish I could do things all over again. Ah! Hey, what a CV. Let's do that again. There was a man. There was a woman whose name was Job. Huh? That man was what? Blameless. And he was upright. And he feared God and shunned evil. Are you listening to those qualifications? Huh? Right? Verse 2. And seven sons, no barrenness, in other words, three daughters were born to him. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yokes of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household. So sin will keep you in that one room according to this scripture. <laughs> you will remain a squatter. He told us the CV, then he told us the house. Are you in agreement? Okay? A very large what? Household. So that this man was the greatest of all the people in the East. By the out of holiness. Say greatness. greatness. By holiness. By holiness. Hallelujah. Amen. And one of the things I love about this is that look, jump to verse number 8. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him on the earth. Look at what? A blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Full stop. Now, listen to this. If, if, if this was not true, the devil would have now brought out the file and said, excuse me. <laughs> Pam Soroy, your excellency, <clears throat> with all due respect, we want to quote one uh, April approximately 1500 hours address <laughs> Corner third and central. <laughs> yeah. Nature of sin of our quarter scripture. Uh, Your Honor, I think you missed that one. No, but the devil, the devil, after God gave this CV, the devil was shh. He had nothing to say. Hans, have you considered him? In other words, we don't mess around now. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear you for nothing? You know what that means? Does he fear you for nothing? In other words, he fears you because he knows the benefits. Ah. He fears you because he knows what? The benefits. That statement is very loaded. Does Job fear you for nothing? It means even the devil knows there's reward in serving God faithfully. So he's saying, look at all these possessions that you have given him. That's why he fears you. Because you have blessed him so much. That's why he does what? He fears you. In the same token, the devil was inciting God. And saying, he, he, the only reason why he does this is because of all these things. In other words, give me access. Let me take these things. You'll see that he won't save you. Are you getting it now? Job is a very powerful scripture. A very powerful passage of scripture. And, and does Job fear you for nothing? Verse 10. Have you not made a hedge around him? In other words, you are saying, God, don't play with me. You have put a hedge around him. You know I can't access him. So holiness gives you a hedge of protection. Have you not put a, a hedge, listen to this, all around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? In other words, I've tried all the sides. <laughs> you see that? And all around everything he has on every side, you have blessed the works of his hands. And his possessions have increased in the land. In other words, I tried to stop the increase, but they kept increasing. 
Why did this happen? Holiness. 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 By this, by this decision of holiness, your goods will increase in the land. Hallelujah. So look at this. The devil attacked Job and Litiga. You know the story, and Litiga. But look at verse 22, and I want us to end here. In all this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. In all the troubles Job had, he did not sin or charge God with. You see that? Now, listen to this. It's his wife who said, curse God and die. It's not Job. It's his wife who said, curse God and die. Remember? Okay? Now, why am I mentioning this as I close? I'm mentioning this because what the devil will try and do, if, if uh, temptation is not working, the devil will put pressure. Are you listening to me? So the more pressure he puts on you, because of this decision you have made, you will experience pressure. I, want you, I, I don't want you to be oblivious. I need you to understand. You will have a lot of pressure. The devil will put what? Say so the devil will put pressure. But listen to Job's position. In all this he did not sin. So the devil will put so much pressure that he said, you know what? You, you are doing the right thing, but look, 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 your things are not moving. Are you seeing this? Because, listen to this, and write this down, your holiness must be tested. It must be tested over a period of time. And in that period of time, the devil is going to put pressure on you to compromise. The devil will put pressure on you to do what? To compromise. So don't succumb to the pressure. Is that, that's what I'm saying. Because it's easy to succumb to pressure when things are going wrong. I mean, Job was losing things on every side. And he didn't say, where is God? He didn't say, why has the Lord allowed this to happen? He didn't do that. Because that's also a sin. When you now charge God with wrong, that is a sin. So Job did not sin because of pressure. So don't be pressured into sin. Don't be pressured into sin. Especially young girls, don't be pressured into sin. Because there will be a certain lifestyle and upkeep that you want. And you can easily be pressured into sin. So you need to overcome that temptation. Am I talking to somebody here? And if you then go and study Job 42, what happened? The Lord restored everything that the devil had taken from Job. And he received double for his trouble. Read it. Hallelujah. Even if you get into trouble because of holiness, God will still be with you. Proof positive is, jo is, is, is Joseph. Joseph got into trouble because he refused Potiphar's wife. If he had slept with Potiphar's wife, he would not have gone to prison. Read your Bible. It was a false accusation, isn't it? Is it not? And then he was thrown into prison because he did something right. And then the Bible says, while he was in that prison, that's Genesis 39, and the Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord was with Joseph. So even in your prison experience, God will be with you if you are holy. Amen. Hallelujah. So God will take you out of the difficult place because you have made up your mind to be holy. Why am I talking about this in business class? Because there can be no successful business without holiness. So it's something that we must make up our minds to do in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And be holy in your financial dealings with God. Don't keep your tithe in your account. Deciding. What are you deciding? There's no decision to make. Are you here? Just go and swipe it. Send that transfer. You can do it from your home. You don't even have to wait to come to church. To church you can just come and present your envelope. Just write your transfer reference number. Amen. So, because God said, if you if if you are not tithing, you are robbing me. Robbing me is a sin. Unless if you are saying all those armed robbers are going to heaven. If armed robbers are not going to heaven, non tithers are not going to heaven. Yeah, I mean, for many years, I mean, preachers have been saying, no tithing is not a sin. It's a sin if you're robbing God. If God says you're robbing, that, that makes it a sin. Otherwise, everyone in the prison there is going to help. One way to get to help, especially the armed robbers, they are going to help. 
It's not the case. They are going to help because robbery is wrong. If stealing is wrong, robbery is even worse. So don't rob God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Fulfill your pledges. It's part of the holiness walk. You promise to do something for the kingdom, do it. Fulfill that pledge. The devil fights you fulfilling your pledge because he knows when you fulfill your pledge, your prophecy will be fulfilled. You fulfill your pledge, your prophecy will be fulfilled. Hallelujah. May you take this teaching with grace. Hallelujah. May you take it with grace. Hallelujah. And this teaching is not me saying that I'm ascribing to some form of holiness. I'm holier than thou. No. Like everybody else, I am working out my own salvation. But I'm here to stand here and tell you, Son of God, it is very possible. It is possible. The devil will make you think that it's not possible. But it is possible to walk in holiness. Hallelujah. You are blessed to hear this kind of message. May you, may you lift up your right hand. May you be holy in all your dealings. Any deal you do on the marketplace, any contract you do, anything that you do on the market, may it not leave anyone, anyone emotionally damaged. May it not leave anyone crying in the name of Jesus. May people smile because of your dealings. May your customers be happy. May your suppliers be happy. In the name of Jesus, those for whom you provide services, may they be happy. May you not overcharge people. And may you not underpay employees. May you walk in righteousness. May God be pleased with the work you are doing in the name of Jesus. We know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal.